But let me just ask you something. Can something be God's will and not come to pass? Right? It actually says in the scripture that it's God's will for all men to be saved. But are all men saved? Do you know that the scripture actually says it's God's will for everybody to be healed? But how many know not everybody's healed? Do we understand that? No, we don't. Okay? Um, and so we're going to be talking a little bit this morning about how do we move forward when we feel like we've known something was God's will, but we're faced with a different reality in the world that we're living with. And I believe that God is looking for people that know how to contend for his will to come to pass in the earth. See, I believe that America shall be saved. I believe God has not changed his mind about the fact that God has got his hand on America. God has not lifted his hand off of America. And Jesus taught us to pray this way. He said, learn to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. This is not going to be a political message. This is going to be about how do we pray, how do we move forward, and how do we understand God's purpose in this. Some people might wonder, why do we spend time praying for our nation? Why do we spend time praying for the nations around the world? Why do we spend time praying over elections and policies? I mean, after all, God says that we're not actually even citizens of this world. Do you know that our citizenship is actually in heaven? Okay, so we've got to keep the perspective of understanding that our eternal citizenship is in heaven, but understanding God's perspective about the nations that are in the earth. And so I want to take a few minutes and talk about how uh, that nations are important to God, to, to important to God, and if nations are important to God, they need to be important to us. Okay, there are some people that are of the mindset not to mix our spiritual journey of faith with the corruption of the world in which we live. And I just think that that is not what the Bible teaches at all. Let me help you to understand where that teaching comes from. It comes from back in the first century from a group called the Gnostics, okay? And the Gnostics believed that, um, that, that basically uh, everything that, uh, that, that the church needed to separate itself from the evils of the world, okay? And basically focus on everything spiritual but nothing natural. How many know that Jesus had a lot to say about natural things? Jesus had a lot to say about the natural world in which we live. And so let's look at the fact that, first of all, nations, cities, and territories are important to the Lord, Okay, so let's look at this. Let's, let's read the Great Commission. These were Jesus' departing words to his church just before he made the, the declaration about being filled with the Holy Spirit. He was, he was teaching his disciples after he was resurrected and he was getting ready to go home to the Father. And he gave them this charge. He said, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of the people that you meet. Now, how many know we're, we're supposed to do that? But that wasn't what Jesus charged them to do. He said, go make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. We call this the Great Commission, because Jesus was commissioning his church 2,000 years ago to go out and touch the nations. Okay, And we have to understand that that commission hasn't changed, that mandate hasn't changed, that he's actually continuing to speak to us and say it's very important for the church to understand that we're not just going to be introspective about what goes on be inside of our four walls, but he says there's nations out there that we've got to change, that we've got to teach, and that we've got to make disciple. That word disciple actually means to bring them into a schooling and to teach them. And I just want you to know, our nation is being discipled. The question is not, is our nation being discipled? The question is, who is discipling our nation? 
Because I would, I propose to you that mainstream media is discipling our nation. That Hollywood is discipling our nation. That entertainers are discipling our nation. When God actually said to the church, it's your job to disciple nations. It's your job to set culture. It's your job to begin to steer the way that a nation goes. And so when Jesus is talking about nations, I think it's very interesting, if you go to the next slide, to see what this word nations actually means. It is the word ethnos, which is where we get the word ethnic or ethnicity. And we often think that that means um, people of different races. And how many understand that's, a, that's also an accurate translation of this word. But it actually means more than that. It means people groups. It means a race of people, a tribe. It means multitudes of individuals of the same nature. And so we know that America is a nation... But I would also propose to you that we have many, many nations within our nation. We have many, many races of people, cultures of people within our nation. But we also have many different identifiable people groups that has nothing to do with DNA and Ancestry.com. So I, I want to alert you to the fact that when Jesus said, go make disciples of nations, immediately what our mind goes to, and it should, is the nations that we pray for that have borders, okay? But there are nations within the nation and people groups that you're interacting with every single day, and you might think, how in the world can I disciple a nation? Well, you can actually disciple a nation by touching and impacting the people group that you're working with on a day-to-day -day basis. That is your mission field right where you live. Okay? So we've got to start where we live, and then we've also got to pray into um, the, the, the bigger picture of nations. So let me ask you, if Jesus is asking us to disciple nations or to teach and train nations for the purpose of kingdom transformation, to bring the kingdom of God down, because remember, Jesus taught us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, where? On earth. Jesus is going to talk about earth, changing earth, yes. On earth as it is how? In heaven, Pastor Dean in his book, um, Apostolic Kingdom Praise, I've never forgotten where I got it from, Dean, even though I preach it all over the world. He, he actually did an exegesis of this. And do you realize that that phrase, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, literally means to take heaven and superimpose it on earth. Wow, what a job. But that's our job. That's our job. It's not just the pastor's job. It's not just the government's job. That's our job, to take the principles of the kingdom and pull them out of this intangible spirit realm and to pull it down right where we live and to begin to say, thy kingdom come to Santa Rosa Beach.